All right, so buckle up, everybody. Get ready to dive deep into a story. It'll take us way back, like all the way to 1774. But you know what? It's about the origins of something you might not expect. Robotics. Yeah, robotics. You're the right, robotics. We're going to unearth the surprisingly early, I mean really early, roots of robotics. How early are we talking? Early. Like think powdered wigs and quill pens early. Okay, I'm intrigued. And we're going to do it all through, get this, the tale of the writing boy. The writing boy. Sounds kind of whimsical, right? Whimsical is one word for it. Okay, so what's the story here? Well, the writing boy, let me tell you, this thing perfectly shows just how innovation, like groundbreaking innovation, can be hidden in plain sight. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. You know, at first glance, it just sounds like a simple, you know, children's toy, like yeah. a wooden doll. It's got a porcelain head, barefoot, holding a quill. Okay, I'm picturing it, but you said ro robotics. Hold on to your hats, my friend, because this isn't just any doll. Okay. This, my friend, is the world's first android. Whoa. Wait a minute. Go back. 1774, you said? 1774. That's what, the reign of King Louis VI? King Louis VI, that's right. Yeah. A time when electricity, forget it, computers, not even a dream. Right. Those are still like the stuff of science fiction. And yet, boom, here we have Pierre Jacques Drow. Who's that? Pierre Jacques Drow. This guy was a Swiss watchmaker. Okay. And guess what? He created a machine, and this machine... It was capable of writing. A doll that could write. That's right. Okay, but how, I mean, watchmaker, that seems, I don't know, that's a pretty big leap. You go from tiny gears and springs, right? <laughs> and then, bam, a writing automaton. It does, right? It does seem like a leap, doesn't it? Yeah. But think about it. Think about the precision, the intricacy of watchmaking. I mean, you really start to see the connection. Okay, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Drow skill, right. I mean, this guy was a master of manipulating tiny mechanisms. Yeah. And that was absolutely essential in creating... Wait for it. 6,000 moving parts. 6,000 6, moving parts. All working together, all perfectly in sync, all to bring the writing boy to life. That is mind-blowing. 6,000. I can't even imagine. Right. I mean, just the dedication. You think about the level of dedication that must have taken. It boggles the mind. It really does. So yeah. what was his motivation? I mean, what was this just for entertainment? Or was Dro thinking bigger? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, what drove Dro to create such a complex machine? I mean, it's one thing to make a doll that, I don't know, moves its arms or something, but to make it right, there's got to be a deeper purpose there, right? Well, here's where it gets even more wild. You see, the writing boy wasn't just moving, it was programmed. Programmed? What do you mean programmed? Okay, so picture this, a, a series of like tiny cams and levers. Okay, yeah. Each one carefully shaped, meticulously placed. Yeah all to dictate every single movement of this little doll. Wow. Like a preset sequence of instructions, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, this is this is what allowed the writing boy to write specific words and phrases. Okay, so when you say programmed, you mean like predetermined actions. Exactly. Not the kind of like flexible programming that we think of today with computers and stuff. Exactly. But even in this early form, this rudimentary form of programming. Yeah. Think about it. The idea of programming a machine, any machine, to perform a specific task. Oh. That was revolutionary. It really was. I mean, we take it for granted today. Totally. But back then, hmm? mind-blowing. Totally. And you know what? It kind of, it foreshadowed the potential of automation. It's like this idea that machines, they could be more than just tools. Mm -hmm. They could be like extensions of human ingenuity, right? Mm. Like capable of carrying out complex instructions. Yeah, that's a great point. So let's, let's picture the scene. Drello unveils this marvel in Paris. The court of King Louis the Sixth. Oh, wow. What was the reaction? Can you imagine being in that room? This wooden doll out of nowhere starts forming letters. The words. Sentences. Full on sentences. Not, right. It must have seemed like magic. I know. Just a testament to the power of human ingenuity. And the craziest thing is the source actually mentions the very first thing that the writing boy wrote. Oh, really? What was it? Get this. It wrote, my inventor is Jacques Drow. Ah, that's kind of sweet. Right. It's like the machine's birth announcement or something. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine witnessing that for the first time? It would be unbelievable. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. It puts into perspective just how far we've come, technologically speaking. But also, it shows us that 
the seeds of innovation. I mean, they were planted centuries ago. Absolutely. The writing boy is a great reminder, isn't it? That yeah. what seems impossible in one era, well, it can become commonplace in another. Right. It makes you wonder, you know, like what breakthroughs are happening today right now that future generations are going to look back on with that same awe. I know. It's like what seems like magic to us now exactly. is going to be their everyday reality. Mm. That's a fantastic point to ponder. And on that note, I think we'll wrap up our deep dive into the world of the writing boy. Great deep dive. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, everybody, on this journey back in time. It's amazing what we can learn from the past. Thanks for listening. You got it.